What's up guys, Champ here bringing you some more Black Ops 3 gameplay. Today what I got for you guys is finally that 100 plus that I've been talking about the last 3 videos that I've made. The thing is, i got like 5 or 600 plus gameplays and I was trying to figure out like which one should I show you guys. I want to show you guys the better one. And then I was looking at all of them I was like, you know what, I'm probably just going to end up showing all these anyways. So after watching them over a couple times, just wasting time, I was like, let me just pick one. I'll show you guys this one. And then next time I'll show you the next one and then we'll just keep going with it from there. Because this is what my channel is all about. This is what we started off doing here on Black Ops 3. It's all about 100 plus kill gameplays. Chaos Mosh Pit. Going in solo. Taking down the enemy team. Trying to get the W but that's not always the case. I'm not going to lie. Most of my 100 plus kill games that I've gotten in Black Ops 3 are on losses. This game right here, we are going to get pulverized. You can see we're already getting pulverized. This guy right here with the CUDA, with that whatever site he's got on it, whatever reticle he's using, ends up taking me off a couple streaks early on in this game. You're going to see in the kill cam, that man right there specifically destroys me when I'm like 200 points away from a talent. I think three times in this game. So this game could have been a lot better. So it starts off a little slower than it should have been. But not really slow. It's just I'm not completing my streaks at this point. I'm getting good like probably like bloodthirsty stuff like that. Five, six kill streaks. And then dying right before I end up getting my streaks up. But that's all going to change. And as soon as I th start throwing my streaks in, we are going to make a huge comeback on these guys. It is going to come down to the wire at the end. You guys will see that at the end of the game, they're up. And I'm already at 100 kills. And I'm like, I want this game to last. So the only way for the game to last is for me to play the hard point a little bit. So I try to go hard for that hard point at the end of the game. I try to pull off this comeback victory on these guys. And you guys are going to get to see how it goes down. You're also going to see that I go on some pretty nice gun streaks in this game. I get a whole lot of uh, wraps. Well, actually, I don't get a lot of wraps. I don't know why I even said that. I get a whole lot of wraiths in this game. And I die off my wraps a couple times. Which is always frustrating. Anytime you can get the wraith up and you don't get the wraps up, that's usually because you just got a little anxious and you just made a move that you really shouldn't have made. Right here, I'm going to go on a nice little tear. I'm going to pick up my streaks. Got my combat focus up. Got the wraith. Got the talon. Good to go. And this is going to be one of those situations, I think, where I mess up and I don't end up getting my wraps yet. Definitely is one of those situations. And this is going to be that Kuda guy with that crazy reticle on that everybody's been using lately because I think it adds more aim assist. Not positive, but it seems like everybody's using it for a reason. And look at this spot this guy's hiding in. I've never seen someone hide there before. I don't know how I didn't see him when I first came in. I just never take notice to that spot because that's just not a spot I see people in. Very crafty for him right there. I will give him that one. Like, what was I going to do? I ran right by. I actually was looking inside trying to just get that last kill for the wraps. I should have just stayed upstairs. I got a little anxious. I swear, in Call of Duty, if it's over five seconds and I'm in a spot, I got to, like, move. There he is again, waiting for me with that Cuda. Perfect aim. So far in this game, I don't think he's missed any bullets on me. Like, every single bullet that he shot out of that gun had hit me. But he's also been waiting for me to come around corners and has just gotten me in the right situation at the right timing. All that is going to change soon though. He was lucky enough to stop my streaks like on my first two or three attempts, but he's not going to be so lucky for the rest of this game. I don't know how my teammate got an enemy GI unit because it's... I mean, I have teammates that did okay in this game, like I think like a 40 and 30 finish by the end of it, but definitely not GI unit numbers. 
playing hardpoint, I mean, that's like a 15 kill streak right there without the combat focus, probably to get that GI unit. And that's a lot. And I don't think anyone has that just this far in this game. Especially now with the way he finished. 40 and 30 does not look like the type of numbers where you have a GI unit. Usually the people that get the GI units finish with like numbers of like under 10 deaths or something like that and like over 50 kills because that's just what it takes it takes a really long gun streak on to put that on you have to be a good player to even think you're going to get a gi unit really he probably just got a care package so i'm really talking about this way too much most of the time that's what it is you got a lucky care package you don't really see G gi units in the care package that often but it does happen i mean i've seen motherships come out of care packages a lot too in this game it seems like if you're down they're going to give you the good care package. If you're up, then you're going to get the crap care package. So if you're a good player that wins a lot of games, don't throw care package on. But if you're a bad player and you always seem to be on the losing team, throw that care package on and I think you're going to get some good stuff with it. That's just my theory because I feel like whenever I'm playing versus another team, they get really good stuff in their care packages. Anytime I put the care package on, I tend to get a UAV, RC8, you know, I always get one of those little cars, and I, I refuse to even use a car. I won't even use it. I'll just have it in my pocket just in case. I don't like to go into my score streaks in any Call of Duty game unless the score streak is really dominant. Like, the Cerberus could be really dominant, and then sometimes I maybe will go into the Cerberus, but that's about it. Besides the Cerberus, I really don't like going into my score streaks. And look at this death. This is the fourth crazy death of the game. That two just came in and sprayed me, like, straight through the wall with the dingo without knowing exactly where I am. Knowing I was in there, and that's fine, but being able to just spray through the wall like that is kind of a little crazy in this map. The damage was done, though. I picked up my streaks already, and that time I got my wrap, so you're going to see I'm about to start going off. A little thing I like to do is when the wrap and the wraith are up in the air and they're getting constant kills, that's when I like to throw my combat focus out and... Even if you don't find anyone to kill, as long as your Raps and your Wraith are getting kills, they're going to bring your points up a lot. And if you just play slow and patient kind of on your next life, you should be able to rerun your score streaks and get a couple more score streaks, which is about to be what I'm going to do right here, right now. I'm not going to say I'm playing really slow and patient. I'm running right into the enemy spawn. That's kind of the opposite of what I'm talking about. But slow and patient for me, I guess, is running into the enemy spawn without trying to take on like three or four gunfights at once. I kind of did a little more strategically there because I did want to rerun these streaks right here. And I'm actually getting pretty close right there. That was an iffy gunfight. That one obviously could have went either way. I got the stock on this Weevil in this game. And that always helps me win at gunfights. I stopped using the stock because I kind of wanted to throw the silencer on lately, but I might go back to it. I'm always switching. I'm constantly switching my guns up, constantly switching up my classes. But I didn't go over the class for you guys yet in this game. So back when I was making this gameplay, I was using a little bit different of a Weevil setup than I've used in my previous couple of gameplays that I've been showing. And what it is, is I use Quick Draw, I use Grip, I use Extended Mag still, and I use Stock. And then I just use Afterburner, Fast Hands, and Tack Mask. If I'm on Nuketown, definitely Tack Mask. If I'm not on Nuketown, I guess I could switch out for like something else possibly. Maybe Dead Silence, maybe Gung Ho. But most likely it's just going to be Tack Mask. Because if I get stunned one time in any game, I almost want to like throw my controller through the screen. Not literally, but kind of. I just hate the feeling of being stunned and slowed down like that so like worthless and helpless feeling when you get stunned not cool can't have that so i usually will run tack mask even if they hear me a little bit by the time they hear you boost if you got good map awareness and you know where you're boosting towards they're almost they're pretty much already getting shot at you're already killing them by the time they realize you just boosted in there sometimes there's some really pro players that use awareness and have really good microphones and headsets and they're going to pick up on your boost. And to tell you the truth, those are not really the people I want to play versus anyway. So if I notice that and they happen to do well versus me one game and I do notice that they're like, you know, sound whoring me like that, I'll just get a new lobby. I mean, I'm never going to quit the lobby mid-game. Just, that's just not something I do. The only way I'll quit the lobby mid-game is if I get left on like a, a two-on-five or a two-on-six versus six-man party and they just start throwing up haters and stuff like that. 
haters that I didn't even give them, haters that my teammates gave them, then quit the game and ran away from me, and now I'm left to deal with their mess. That's the only time I really quit. But for the most part, the loading in Black Ops 3 takes forever. That's probably the worst part about this game. And I just don't have the time to be quitting, starting up a new game, quit, start up a new game. So you guys might have noticed right there, I was playing back. I was playing back until I got my wraps. I knew if I got my wraps and threw them in, then we have a really good chance to still make this comeback. Even though the other team is up so many points in this game. And right now is where you're going to see that I'm going to go hard, try to make this comeback. Not just for the win. But just to make this game last a little longer, I mean, I just got my Wraith and my Raps and threw them up. I want to get some kills off of those things and see if maybe I can get, you know, as high of a kill game as possible. I think the most kills I've gotten in Black Ops 3 playing solo is around 140. I think it was like 139 exactly. Anyone that wants to check that gameplay out, it's one of my earlier gameplays. Just scroll through my playlist of 100 plus kill gameplays. It's very easy to find. I made a 100 plus only playlist, so for those people that just want to see really high killing gameplays, it's very easy for you guys to go and find. You guys will notice in this gameplay that it was my intention to try to get this W and bring us back, but I don't really think it was my teammate's intention. And I pick up this guy's dingo, the same guy who just shot me through the garage, and now I'm starting to see why he was able to just shoot me through garages with this gun. I just went on like an eight man feed with this gun really quick, really easily. And then the spawn flipped, or the hard point flipped is more like what happened. As soon as the hard point flipped, they were already on it, ready to rotate. He jumped right on it and that took the hard point again. before I can get there. I was literally shooting at the guy that was Don't on it. But their team was more aware and they knew what was going on, where my team really didn't have a clue how to rotate on hard point. I hope you guys like what you saw here. That was 107 kills, only 12 deaths playing Nuketown Hardpoint. I know I didn't get much more than 23 seconds in the Hardpoint there, and I think that was pretty much only at the end of the game was the only time I really tried to play for the Hardpoint. But if you're getting as many kills as I am and you're slaying everybody out around the hard point, you are doing your job. It's time for your teammates to step up and get in there. I'm always around the hard point. I'm always trying to defend the hard point, but I'm not exactly just sitting in the hard point. Because I use Afterburner, I can't really just be sitting in the hard point. I don't have any flap jacket on. Grenades will just get me destroyed, and people love to chuck grenades up in the hard point. There goes all my medals, 26 kills with the Wraith, 11 kills with the Wrap. This has been Champ at Champ Gaming. Come see me.